Hi, this is Caleb with Practical Dad's Advice, and today we're going to go into the intermediate level of the user interface or UI of DAWS Studio 4.8. So what I want to show you today is a lot of little things that I've learned in working with DAWS that will help your workflow, uh, help you customize the program to, to meet your needs. The first thing is is that you'll notice when you open up the default DAS Studio, it will, on the render tab here, it will have active viewpoint, and that's, that's where we're at right now. But that's not what we're wanting to render at. We're not wanting it to be uh, determined. We don't want the pixel size and ratio to be determined according to our monitor. We want to set it ourselves. So we're going to right click on, right click on the dimension preset, and we have a bunch of presets here. 16 by 9 is the standard of YouTube. So that's the one that uh, will be probably most used. But that didn't seem to do much of anything. So if I want to see, I want to see the camera so I know what's in frame, what's not in frame. So if I go up here to this little, this little uh, menu thing right here, and I left click on it, show aspect frame. Now, I have my frame laid out and I can see my frame and if I go to uh, if I go into my posing thing and I, I got a little shot set up for us so let's play this shot real quick and it's choppy because it's just previewing it but that's the shot I have and so let's say I'm playing with it and and I notice something that I don't like you know I don't like this picture or, or I really think that her jacket should be have some more color to it or something like that well I don't want to have to go into other tabs and and have to to come into this tabs and then I find the the selection the surface selection tool and then I select the surface and I do all that I want to streamline this a lot more so what I can do is I can actually right click in an empty space here and I can add tools so I added my basic tool sets here so that's real nice I have my I can do test renders now in and while doing my animation okay and I can uh, grab and move things and I'm not I'm not held to, to only the default the next thing is I want to add a panel. I want to I want to change the surface, but I don't want to have to go. I don't want to have to leave this this workspace in order to do it. So I go to Windows and Panels, and then I add surfaces. So that brings this up, and I left click on that and drag it where I want it, and now I have a surfaces tab. So I can grab this, and I'm going to change it to a blue. There we go. Now I have a blue. Now she's, she's got some color in her jacket. See? That works. It looks nice. That works good. Um, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a real cinematographer here, or at least I want to be. And so if I, if I know anything about cinematography and camera work, then I know about third guides. So how do I have third guides in DAW Studio so that I can have symmetry and make my shots look good and framed correctly? Well, I go back up here. And you may have noticed before, but I have show thirds guides, which that allows me to have my quadrants. And I can see, is she staying in the center of frame throughout the entire thing? Is she, is she drifting into out of frame? What's coming into frame from where? How's the whole thing looking? That looks pretty good. See, she's staying in center frame. That way, I know she's staying in center frame, and it makes the entire shot look much, much nicer when it's completed. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is how to save your custom creations besides just a scene and then how to load those things back in so I have I've made this character it's it's pretty uh, basic default character and I want to I want to save her though I want to save this character and so I go to file and I have all these presets that I can save and all of these presets have a lot of uses but the one I use most is scene subset 
So I'm going to save it as a scene subset and I'm going to call it walking lady. All right. So I save my walking lady and it's got everything here and it's got everything in the scene. Well, I don't want everything in the scene. I, I just want her. So what I do is I click on that and I go to uncheck, uncheck all. And now I can pick what it is I'm wanting to have. And I believe that's it. So now I save. Boom. There it is. Now if I go into, uh, it's always under unassigned, at least it is for me. Unassigned, set, and I look, walking lady, there she is. So if I were to bring her in, it would be, it would bring her in. It, um, it'd bring her in with her animation, actually. Now if I want to say, save a light I want to save the lightings that I have so I have uh, I have this series of lights here on this sign right and I, I want to save that I don't want to have to redo that so I can do the exact same thing I go and I find those lights in my scene left click hold down shift left click now I got them create create new group I call it uh, sign lights save that go to save as scene subset sign lights save and I uncheck everything and then I go and I check the group that I want, which is sign lights, and boom, now it's saved. I go and I see it right there in my in my set. And so I can bring that in and now I have an extra set. So let's say I uh, want to light up a different sign and not have to redo it. Now I have lights to put for a separate sign. The last thing I want to show you today is so if I go to my distant light, my advanced distant light, and I have the cityscape here, and I can bring my light in, and you notice that uh, you have these buildings. So let's say I'm trying to get the light to come in from this direction, but those buildings are there. Or let's say I'm trying to get the light to come in from this direction even, but the buildings that are going to be in the shot are there. So I don't want to delete the building so, or, or not have them show up in the render. So how do, I, how do I deal with that? Well, the first thing I do is I select the building. I select what it is I'm wanting to... Uh, I'm wanting to not have the effect on. So I select the building and I go into the parameters and here you see cast shadows and what that simply does is it's no longer going to cast a shadow but if I go here see the buildings still there it just no longer casts a shadow so that allows me to put especially distance lights where I want them without having to worry about uh, the lights getting blocked out. Sometimes you do want the light to get blocked out in order to, uh, especially if it's supposed to be a sun or a moon type light. But those are some basic tips, tricks, and slightly more advanced ideas for how to deal with the user interface. If you have any questions below, uh, leave a comment. I'll probably do another video like this answering your questions so yep I think that's everything thank you for watching like and subscribe like and subscribe this is Caleb from practical dad's advice be at peace